Good afternoon. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping rules. In case of a fire, I think that door is our best bet. Um, location point is on the basketball court just out there. Toilets are just straight ahead out this door, straight ahead in front of you. And I think that's it. Anything else you'd like to know? All right. Thank you for turning up. Tim, where would you like candidates to stand to get your best, their best side? Anywhere works. <laughs> Biggest spot, right? Yep. They can just stand up and I can move through. Just stand up with our, and you'll just go yeah. that, that works. And we'll start from this end and go through, and then we'll have a Q&A afterwards. Each candidate will get three minutes to speak. I will ding the bell when your three minutes is up. <laughs> Would you like another queue, like one minute? Two minutes. Yeah. Two minutes? You like a two minute queue? Right. No, 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 you're only giving us three. Come no, on, one, one minute. Is one minute queue? Oh, yeah. It's three minutes. Okay, so I'll, I'll tell you when a minute is remaining. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> for the Upper Harbour Local Board, alongside Nicholas Main, Anna Atkinson and Sylvia Yang. Uh, we support healthy active communities, uh, growing green spaces, greater transport choices, and a resilient, sustainable economy. Uh, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge Te Kaurau Maki, uh, Ngāti Whatua and other iwi uh, who are connected to this rohe um, and their connection to the whenua predates mine. Um, my whanau came to New Zealand about eight generations ago. Um, Papa back to Golden Bay, to Kaipara, Pukekoe. Um, my father served as an education officer in the New Zealand Air Force, Royal New Zealand Air Force for 42 years. Um, my mother is a teacher who supports children with special needs. I'm married with two school-aged children. I stand for inclusion, those who know me well. Um, can speak to my tenacity and commitment in the face of mental health and disabilities um, and how well I collaborate with other people. I'm passionate about our, our environment and helping people. Um, I've volunteered as a leader for my local scouts group for the last six years as well as being active for the, um, in, in lots of local community projects. I grew up in Upper Harbour um, on Hobson Air Base as well as in South Island, Papua New Guinea. Um, my wife and I bought our, bought our first house um, just over the road on Santiago Crescent in Meadowwood here. Um, I went to Glenfield College, received my, my degree from um, Massey Albany, worked at Eco Matters Environment Trust for three years and then served as a project manager at Auckland Council for five years on projects like the Auckland Plan, Sustainable Neighbourhoods, Organic Collections, Resource Recovery Network and Healthy Rentals. Uh, before setting up a community enterprise seven years ago to serve our community and protect our environment. Sustain and enables a living wage employer that connects people to meaningful work to help others <coughs> live in healthier homes um, and to reduce their waste. For a progressive team who cares about the same things you do, who will collaborate and who knows how to get things done at Auckland Council by Kyle Parker, Nicholas Main, Anna Atkinson, Sylvia Yang, Living Up a Harbour. Namahi Nui, Kia Koto. My name is John Malal and I'm one of your Upper Harbour uh, Local Board candidates. Uh, just a little bit about me, I've been living in Hobsonville Point for the last uh, five years and some of you are probably wondering, this guy sounds a bit funny. A short story is, I'm born in Samoa, my parents lived here until I was about seven years old before we went off to the United States and lived in Los Angeles for well over 25 years. I've been back in New Zealand since 2011. Uh, in my time as I grew up overseas and, and uh, in my return here in New Zealand, I've worked in the private sector as well as in government, uh, working in several roles from, from a local government standpoint in that space. I, I bring my, my lived experience, Councilman, I, live my, I bring my lived experience and my corporate experience as well as a balance of my governance experience of working with government and, uh, and local groups just to uh, deliver for our communities. And those are the things I have to bring uh, to, to the local board and should I have the opportunity to get there. Um, I'm running for the Upper Harbour Local Board because my parents, as we grew up around the world, were living in different places that immigrant families do. 
And my, mar my mom and dad used to give us a bunch of rules as kids. And one of the ones that stuck out of my head was to, to look out while we're out there. Uh, when you're young, you're thinking you're looking out for the weird person in the van who might snatch you, but you grow up and think, oh, that, that's not it. It eventually, for me, meant that you got to look out for your neighbors that are next door, that, you know, the 90-year-old neighbor that needs help taking the bins out, or you need to look out for the community groups that need help, whether or not they uh, are pulling weeds in the neighborhood, or just looking out to participate in some type of government um, advocacy work and those kind of things. So I look at our community today and kind of think, well, are our communities being delivered as best as possible from a local board standpoint? Is council delivering for our communities as best as possible? I think they've, they've done an okay job and I'd like to bring my energy to that and look out for our communities. My name is Sean Lau. I'm, I'm hoping to get your support. Thank you. Hello, all. I think I'm known by many. Um, Ten o'clock here. Oh, thank you. Nice to be here. I guess um, we've quite a lot of diversity here this evening, and we're going to have a very interesting upper harbour board. Perhaps my skill set is separate, or a little different to others that are here tonight. I'm a civil engineer by, by profession, so I can relate to road reconstruction, road realignment, stormwater, wastewater, freshwater, and intensification, which is obviously affecting this area of Manorwood. Having said that, there are a couple of things that I'd just like to share with you. I have a business degree that overlays all that, so I like things to be run efficiently, systematically, and there's accountability at the end of a particular project. I'm not new to politics, I've been around for many, many years. Um, my motivation for standing is I like to get things done very efficiently and cost efficiently. In other words, it's done without spending an awful lot of money on consultants and going through endless levels of consultation. So it's about getting to the uh, meaty issues rather quickly. Some of the things which are going to affect this community is, is about intensification, the unitary plan. I can say that uh, there is a plan change looming very shortly, plan change 78, which will set out some of the um, some of the issues which surround um, mitigation and unification. Um, particularly, uh, I think of the Resource Manager Management Act, which is due to be repealed next, I think next, next month, and a new piece of legislation is going to be introduced. The purpose of that is to encourage um, less conflict when you raise a particular issue with council and it's to encourage housing, it's to ratify and recognise Maori issues, climate change, and to cause things to happen a lot quicker. So those are things which are really affecting this community. So it's about speed, resolving conflict, and uh, having a united approach to many of the issues which the Resource Management Act seem to go on and on and not necessarily deliver, and, and now it's just been it's going to be repealed. So putting that aside, I am standing for this local board because I think there's a lot more work to be done and for that reason I'm putting my hand up and putting my hat in the ring again. So thank you for your time and I trust I'll have your support. Thank you. Quite a good idea. I'll just say that I'll pack my glass and that's one minute instead of interrupting you while you talk. That might be good. <coughs> okay, come on. Um, tonight, I'm Anna Atkinson, Tucker I've met some of you before, but I'm just going to give a brief introduction to me before we continue on. I was born and raised on the North Shore. In fact, I had my 21st here in this very hall. Um, fun times. <laughs> anyway, I now live in beautiful Perimero, which is a great place. I've got a um, husband, two kids, a myriad of animals. I'm trying to get the numbers of them down. I'm quite sporty. So I'm, I, like, I like walking, I like hiking, I sail. I'm also involved with lots of community groups. I'm a volunteer treasurer and I'm on the general committee of the Tall West Sand Club. I'm involved in the Bike Albany. I coach a hockey team, manage a netball team. Basically, we've got to do these things to get the community to run. As well as that, I track pests and plant animals. So, enough about me alone, because the team is actually six. And we've got Lisa White, Margaret Miles, and Brian Neeson all stood down today, which is very really sad. So, there'll be three new members. So, what you need is members that can collaborate well. So in my team is myself, Carl Parker and Nicholas Main, and Sylvia who's unfortunately not able to be here tonight. We're not always going to vote at the same time, I mean we all vote at the same time, we're not always going to vote for the same thing, but we do have some values that we all share. They are, so it's a sustainable economy, 
healthy equity communities, growing green space and greater transport choice. So I want to talk about a couple of things that are going on in Meadowood related to the healthy equity communities. I think Meadowood in particular has been really well served recently in terms of what council have done and council have spent. There's obviously been the, the new Bluebird Reserve upgrade, which is looking really good. There's the new basketball court at Rock Reserve. There's on, Tuesday, on Thursday coming up, there's a very early opening, um, dawn blessing of the new Caribbean Drive sports field. It's a three million dollar sport field plus toilet facility, which is opening here. So the NCI works, yes, they've caused issues, but you will end up with better transport, as well as a shared path and walkway between here, Constellation and Albany. So there's lots of things that have been done, but just throwing money doesn't create a community. It's the venues like this, it's the community managers that we need to help, we need to enable. So it's our jobs as the board to find out what the community needs. And I've been in it for the last three years. I used to hold events all around the community. I held the couple in Rock Preserve, where I would post on Facebook, hey, I'm going to be here at a certain point in time, so I could meet people, find out what they wanted. So I've got a commitment to listening to what the community want and helping as much as I can. The reality is we are the third lowest funded local board, so anyone who gets up says they can do everything. Well, they can't. I've been a board member. I know the constraints, and, and they are significant. Our funding is going to be cut again this year. But if you want a board who collaborates well and works for the values that I've mentioned before, then it's got to be myself, Kyle, Sylvia, and it. Thank you. Koshiri Kawans uh, Toko Ingoa. I'm Shuri Kawans and I'm standing as an independent candidate for the Up Harbour Board this year. And my priority is to support our community with our new pandemic recovery and find out what our new normal is for everybody. Uh, my family, many generational uh, Kiwis, going back a fair way, business people with a tendency towards music, we've got a few musicians in our family, and real grafters. I was born in Devonport, just down the road here. I grew up on the North Shore, and that's why this is all my home. I've lived all, the way, all around the world, but I've come back to Auckland, it's where I belong, it's my home, and we live in Green Heights now, which is right, it's correct. Uh, I just want to say that I do share the grief of our UK friends in Farnau over the loss of Her Royal Highness Queen Elizabeth II. And my working life has been hospitality all along, looking after people. That's led me to uh, event organising, community committees and so on. I've volunteered for a very long time, organisations like Lions Club International, Girl Garden New Zealand, New Zealand Navy Reserves, even down at the COVID testing centres around Auckland um, through last summer. I see this role as the opportunity for me to continue my community commitment and uh, into a way that it can have a positive and lasting impact. Uh, now, leading up to the pandemic, I had created a non-profit organisation to host zero waste expos around the country. The idea being to work with uh, councils and their solid waste organisations to teach the public how to further reduce their waste impact. I also see potentially as an opportunity to continue along that line, working with what's already been organised for reducing our waste. I believe that diversity in our community is what gives us strength. Whether you consider yourself as an indigenous, early settler, or you just got off the plane yesterday, everybody in our community has got qualities that add to our mountain pot. And I want to, everybody to feel that they're important. I want everyone to feel that they're so vital to our community that they develop a sense of ownership because we aren't all the same. And collaboration is what builds our resilient and adaptive communities. Now, Auckland Council has, is working on the COVID-19 recovery plan. I want to encourage kindness and support in this time, and I want to build our community up to share the strengths that we've gained, to not only recover together, but to ensure that should any emergency arise, we're prepared. We know that we're resilient. Together we can be powerful. I've had people talk to me about financial culpability, community engagement, visibility of council, that I think is really important to make sure that they can see what we're doing in a way that they understand. 
My name is Sheree Cowboys and I'm standing as an independent. Thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Alexis Kennedy. I'm a mayoral candidate uh, for Auckland. This is my seventh time in 24 years. I have run for mayor in uh, four cities. This is my third time in Auckland, uh, twice in Hamilton. I was doing some papers at university and also my hometown Hastings by election and far north when Wayne, um, Wayne was running. I'm also a councillor candidate for Albany with uh, these two men and there's about five of us in the room. So I'm a councillor candidate for Albany Ward where I live. And also I am here today for the Upper Harbour Board. So the first question is why on earth would anybody run for all three? My answer is very simple. I am gifted. For some it's a, it's a gift, for some it's a curse. When you are gifted, uh, every human being has at least five, but when you have a multiple ones like me, I can do it either level. I have skill sets in that without even studying from university. So I have a duty and a responsibility and accountability for who, he who gave me my gifts. So I offer them. If they're not taken up, then I don't have to do the work, and I'm okay with that too. But I'm here because I have the skill set for all three jobs. Done a lot of businesses, made a lot of money, travelled a lot, been really successful. Um, I love the States, I've been there a lot. Um, I'm educated and I'm grateful. I have Maori blood, Scottish and Irish. And today I'm wearing all black because I'm grieving. Um, the Queen has died and I, I have respected the Queen for 62 years. I've learned to respect her and I love her work ethic and I teach to give the same type of work, work ethic no matter what level I serve at. I've done over 45 years. Um, free work, volunteer work. I don't list it because she won't believe me. I can even give the years, the months, the groups, the largest groups are 10,000. But it doesn't matter because I'm gifted, I can do it. If you don't give your gifts back, then you're a crook. So I give back. I'm not in a religion, but I am seriously, seriously looking at getting baptised into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints because I really like the way they reveal Jesus Christ. So I offer to bring that into any, any of the roles that you may choose to put me into. And I'm okay with that, but I have to choose at least 13 people. If we, one of us in the room, we have to tick. If we want to be responsible and do our civic duty, 13 little boxes. So I still have to choose five people here, besides myself, a local board. So then I have to choose at least another person for council with me. And then I only choose myself from here because I need to choose myself because I have the gifts to offer. It's okay if you don't accept them, but I have to offer them. Thank you. My name's Alexis. Kia ora, hello, namaste, hello fa. Hi everybody, this is a journey for me, this is a discovery for me. I am standing for the very first time for Upper Harbour Local Board. I think I'm getting better with each iteration, which each time we're facing this. And uh, no, no, uh, nothing hold, hold, hold back, nothing else back here. This is new for me, but I, I'm not new to teamwork. I'm not new to passion. I'm not new to working together to create greater good here. And that's what I bring to this table. Why do I want to stand for Upper Harbour Local Board? Well, I am. Just a moment, I have something ready for you. Who am I? <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. Nobody else could do that. <laughs> Alrighty, this is becoming my signature move now. So the name is Amar Tvedi. I am the serve, solve, share, support guy. And in all this, if we don't remember what I'm going to say and why I'm... Look, we'll all figure this out. It's about FIO, that's my strategy. But remember one thing, it's important to have fun when you're under pressure. When you're dealing with big issues, when you have a team together, you need to have that one element that makes it lighter and that makes it easier. No mountain is too high to climb if you're the right attitude. I've been looking for the right team here. I'm looking for the, for the right team and my... Oh yeah, please let me know in this two minutes piece because I have... Look, mate, I tell you what, it's all about teamwork. This is a board. The board is made up of six people. There are six seats, right? I would love to have my dream team and I'm going to name them today. Last time I forgot. So the name is Christine Glover. Thank you so much. You inspire me. One thing. John Lau. Sorry? One thing. One thing. You don't to go here. John Lau, you've been my sign up, sign up angel man. Thank you so much for your help. And Uzra Kasuri Baruchi. And while I'm standing here, let me take this opportunity to say thanks to Lisa White and Margaret Moyles. The two names that come to mind, they inspired me. They actually make politics look good. They actually make public service. I want to do that. I want to step in their shoes. If, because for community events that I applied for, 
the budgets came from I don't know from where, and we were able to have the Bali events which we were not able to have. If you, if this is politics, if this is public service, I'm up for it, man. Please elect me. Please vote for me. I'm here to serve you guys. Yeah, that's me. Namaste. Kiora Kiora, Christine Glover Aho. Thank you first of all to Leon from um, Redwood for having us here today. And hi to all of the candidates. Um, good luck to all of us. It's great to see everyone here. So my name is Christine Glover and um, I came across the bridge in about 2013. My um, now husband uh, encouraged me to come over here and I haven't looked back. I started off in Perry and uh, whilst uh, um, my son was six months old, I started working at Albany House and that was such a fantastic job and I had the exact same job as me over here. So I was the community coordinator and I did everything from look after Big Teddy Thursdays to seniors events, um, community um, events like the Albany Christmas carols. I got to meet the, the people that were already doing the job um, and I've seen even Nick uh, go for the role of uh, candidacy. And uh, it's been a great duty so far. From there I went over to uh, Hobsonville Point and I met a few new people and I got involved in the community there, which was an absolute privilege. I was on the uh, Upper Harbour Local, oh, sorry, not the <laughs> I was on the Hobsonville Point Resident Society and I was also the Hobsonville Point Community Liaison Person. So it was my job to communicate to the community and I did that during COVID and it was really stressful but it was a great job and it felt an honour and a privilege to do it. Some of the things that I've been able to do was put shade sails up in Hobsonville Point to make the massive bird slides safer. Um, these were things that were advocated to us by the community um, that I was then able to go to stakeholders and say, hey, let's make this better and safer. And so that's some of the great things that I've done. Um, I've also been involved in the elections and this was one of our voting places. Thanks to Amar, who was one of my staff members, which was great. That's how I kind of got really close to him. And John Lau, I've known recently through all of our community projects in Hobsonville Point. We've also set up now this, which is um, all for the northwest side of business, because obviously here is um, established and we have uh, North Harbour business, but we have nothing in the west, and it's obviously a growing community. So I really support that area and hope that um, we can do more um, on the local board for that, whoever gets in, because I think that's a whole real asset to the Upper Harbour area. Um, I'm a mum, I have two gorgeous children and a loving husband who's also very busy. I cycle to school every day and I'm so glad I did today when um, obviously there was a massive traffic disaster and it sort of became a bottleneck. So um, not only did I get out there on the community and put a, a post on social media to say, hey, uh, this is what's happening and making sure that people are aware of it so that they can make other plans and maybe work from home. But in addition to that, I cycled to um, to kindy and school and that just felt so good to just do those things. So I care about our community, I care about the people, I care about you and I care about all of us. And um, I just, um, yeah, vote for me. Thank you. <laughs> right, good evening. My name is David Cook. I am a res I have been a resident for in Upper Harbour for the last uh, 10 years. This is the first time that I have ever put my name forward for any uh, uh, local body election. Uh, I, my background is in education. I used to be a teacher and I used to uh, uh, graduate from both uh, Canterbury and Auckland University. Uh, I believe that for the future, um, the reason I ask for your vote is that um, I believe in a greater consultation uh, between uh, the community and those uh, stakeholders in Auckland that have a direct effect on the future. For example, I believe that there needs to be a greater consultation between uh, our local community and the police because there has been an increase in the amount of crime uh, in, the, in the last uh, um, 18 months around this area and I'm very concerned about that. Uh, I'm also very concerned about uh, what needs to be done concerning Upper Harbour Drive. Uh, which hasn't been mentioned thus far, um, but I have received a lot of feedback about people who, who are not happy at the state of Upper Harbour Drive and wishing for it to be uh, safer. And uh, I appreciate that, and um, I would like to um, step, I, I would appreciate your support um, for standing for the Upper Harbour Local Board. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'll change it up a bit and I'll stand down the thing. Um, okay, switching. Yeah. Kia ora koutou everyone, my name is Jake Moore. I'm standing with Sylvia Young for Albany Ward Councillor. I'm also standing with Team Coast for the Hibiscus and Bayes Local Board. Um, I was born and raised in the Hibiscus Coast and I, ha I am a teacher, so I have spent uh, more than seven years teaching locally and internationally um, focused in primary schools. I'm the current student president at Mass Eden in Albany, and I know we have a few alum here in the audience, like Kyle and Alexis. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really proud to have the opportunity to run um, and sort of follow in the footsteps of my grandfather who is John Moore, who was the Mayor of Rodney District from 2001 to 2007. Um, so I grew up with him, sort of, I was the young kid in the council chamber, so I have some very fond memories. Um, I'm really passionate about seeing the best possible representation for our beautiful communities. I love the um, different communities in Albany Ward. We have beautiful beaches, wonderful parks, forests, and we have a diverse community who need um, energetic and focused representation. So I, um, there's a few projects that I would love to see brought forward to um, Albany Ward that I think will be of great benefit to this area. Um, one of those is a proposed community recycling centre in Rosedale, which I'm really looking forward to um, hopefully being fast-tracked, and I know it's been, some funds have been earmarked for that, so I'm, um, if elected I'd be very supportive of that as well as um, our Rosedale bus station, which unfortunately was um, sort of put on the back burner by Auckland Council, but I would like to advocate for that to be brought forward as well. And for our future um, second harbour crossing, to make sure that it includes a um, more public transport option, such as light rail, so that we can bring more public transport options to the north and the northwest sooner. I'm also very passionate about protecting our environment. We have um, climate change, which is a risk which is going to impact our communities. We need to make sure that our wastewater and stormwater systems are resilient and invested in um, to mitigate the negative effects of severe weather events and flooding. And yeah, I'm, I'm really passionate about um, having a strong public transport system that encourages people to use multiple modes of transport rather than just private transport. And, um, we have a very disconnected uh, cycle, cycling system across the North Shore and I'd like to see more um, connection in that and more integration with footpaths as well. Yes, yeah, so I'm really proud that I can, I can run. I think I'm the youngest candidate running for Albany Ward. So um, yes, I'm proud to, to bring a younger and more future focused voice to council. Thank you. Kia ora katoa, ko Nicholas Main Toko Ingoana, ko Mato ki Living Up a Harbour. Good evening, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Nicholas Main and I'm one of your Living Up a Harbour candidates along with Kyle Parker, Anna Atkinson and Sylvia Yang. I'm also one of your neighbours. I've lived here in Unsworth Heights for the last 16 years and pretty soon after moving in I became the lead volunteer for our local ecological projects in the park here. And since 2016, I've been one of the members of your local board. Now, I actually missed this debate last election because I had the honour of being a judge at the Mayor's Conservation Awards. And in a similar vein, I'm, here to, I'm going to give Sylvia Yang's apologies tonight because she's off at another event um, in Albany. Um, but back to me. Um, at the last election, I sent through a video. And in that video, I highlighted the state of some of the past in Unsworth Reserve and the need to spend our renewal funding better. Now, there were lots of things that I could have promised you, but this was something I felt that we could deliver, and I thought that it was something that needed to be done that was a commitment to that Anna and I had made to healthy, active communities. Now, it's taken three years, but that renewal has finally taken place. And we also managed to get past renewed in uh, Lady Phoenix Reserve that wouldn't otherwise be renewed, and we've got a renewal that's been planned for Gills Road Reserve that wouldn't have otherwise been done. Now we achieved this by using local knowledge of the state of the assets in the area. Uh, and also, really importantly, we had knowledge about how decisions were being made in Auckland Council that we could then use to put the pressure in the right areas. 
In fact, while other local boards saw a reduction in their renewals funding during the COVID-19 emergency budget, Upper Harbour actually saw a small increase in their renewals funding. And that was because staff were able to use the advocacy that we had put forward to justify the fact that we needed the funds because we were slipping behind in renewals. It's these small but significant wins that being a local board member is all about. Finding ways of benefiting the community where people live. Now, this is my point. If you want good outcomes for Upper Harbour, you need to cut through the spin that some candidates create and ask candidates not just what they're going to do, but how they're going to do it. Remembering that no politician has the power over council staff, budget or CCOs unless they are supported by the majority of the local board. And be gracious to new candidates, because they do, will not know yet what they can achieve. Look for people who have the right skills and temperament to work as an effective team, because that's what really gets things done in Auckland Council. That's why you should vote for all four Living Up the Harbour candidates. Thank you. I'm Victoria Short, I'm the current Deputy Chair of the Hibiscus and Bays Local Board and during my term on this board I have emphasised accountability, um, oh my god it's gone out of my head, accountability, tra uh, transparency um, as well as action. Um, with the transparency I helped a fellow local board member open up our workshops uh, which allowed the members of the public to come in and actually see what we were discussing and what was on our agenda. Um, this I lead, believe to um, inform our community and also be a part of the decision making process. Um, with accountability, I ensured that a lot of our groups who were receiving a lot of the majority of our funds, uh, we knew what they were spending their money on um, because without knowing that, we didn't know whether they were reaching our KPIs and what we wanted to achieve as a board. Um, so prior to becoming the youngest and independent member of the Hibiscus and Bays Local Board, I worked for Murray McCulley um, and then Erica Stanford at the East Coast Bays Electorate Office. Um, there I learned about policy, legislation and the processes down in Wellington, which gave me really good insight in how this affects our community. Um, if, if, when I get onto, or if I get onto the council, I should be so presumptuous. Um, I really want to focus on infrastructure, I really want to focus on um, value for money, and I also want to work collaboratively with other councillors and elected members around the table because I strongly believe if you do not have those relationships around the table, nothing will get done. And I strongly believe that our area has significantly missed out on investment on infrastructure purely because of our relationships around the table. Um, one of the things that really drove me to be here was that when I was at the governing table with my fellow chairman and presenting on what we wanted to achieve as, as, as a board, um, I felt like it was constantly being stopped. Um, oh, that went by really, really fast. Um, and I really wanted to make sure that what we were getting was what we were advocating for and it wasn't coming back to us. So we've seen a lot of our projects deferred um, and we've seen a lot of missed opportunities. So if I come in as councillor, you can guarantee that you will have an energetic councillor who will be there, call me up, text me, call me, I will be there. Um, I'm really looking forward to also potentially working with the new members of the Upper Harbour Local Board. It is sad to see Lisa and Margaret Miles go um, and Brian Neeson. And um, I wish you guys all the best and hopefully I'll see you guys around the table. So my job is to challenge the camera. <laughs> My job is to move around and make you follow me. Kia ora koutou. Ko John Davies aho. My te reo Māori is at kindergarten level, so that's probably the limit of what you'll hear from me. But uh, one thing I can promise is I'm here for the money. I will get the work done. These speeches are a mystery to me. I don't know what I'm going to say. I start and I know that the next three minutes will be a journey of discovery for us. What's going on? <laughs> the one thing I do remember that I have kept missing out on when I give these presentations is to say, go to my website, johndavies.nz, 
All my information is there. All the background on where I've come from and who I've been is there. But one thing I missed out on is, is the opportunity to reflect on the fact that I used to run a community centre. I was, uh, for three years, the manager of a thing called the Rose Centre in Belmont. And we had a theatre and we had community rooms that were available for our community. And from that, I was able to develop a very strong understanding of how communities relate to the centres that live inside them. And for us, in Whangabra, right, in the area I live in, we missed that out. And one of the things I'll be standing for, as councillor for the Albany Ward, is a strong commitment to delivering community amenity and to supporting the amenity that is already there. These people work incredibly difficult. I'm not pointing at the council, incredibly hard. I'm not pointing at the councillors. I'm pointing at the owner over there. Um, the councillors do work very hard as well, but I really was referring to the community centre. The work that comes in and, go, and goes here to deliver a productive centre that brings the community together, that makes us a people that are united, is an incredible amount of work. And so my direction in being a candidate for council is a focus on being able to deliver that community amenity through reprioritising the money that is being spent. One of the things that we forget is the council has a mandate. It's laid out for us in the Auckland Council Act and the Local Government Act. This is a regional council. Our responsibilities are for the basics of life, our environment, our roads, getting rid of our rubbish, looking after our water, all three of them, and delivering on those things. There are an awful lot of things the council does that simply don't fall into that gamut. And we will find the money to make these things happen it is by looking to take money away from the things that are not mandated and not essential. But that doesn't affect our amenities. They're a basic part of the wellbeing. Thank you. Good evening and uh, kia ora everyone. My name is John Watson. I'm um, standing for the Albany Ward uh, as a councillor. I'm currently councillor of the with Wayne Walker. Um, I have a bit of a connection with this year. I was a teacher at Glenfield College for many years and then latterly at uh, Albany Junior High School and a lot of the kids that, that went to both those schools came from around here. Um, your community certainly has been bearing the brunt of the Northern Motorway uh, improvements. So there's been a few complaints with people getting uh, kept up at night with uh, the noise of the machinery and whatnot. But I think you're also going to be the beneficiaries when we're moving towards the end uh, completion of this project, not only in terms of uh, the, the, the widening, the extension to the, the busway, to the walking and cycling links, but the community project. We're in a community house. This project, a little bit like the Waterview Tunnel, has come up with a, a fantastic array of projects as a consequence of that NZTA connection there. We have a new international uh, uh, facility for hockey at, at, at Rosedale. We have a BMX, uh, wonderful down the, uh, facility down there on Otea Valley Road. We have equestrian centre out at Green High. They all came out of this project and even just along the Rock Reserve before the meeting and there was a couple of families in there playing in the beautiful uh, courts and, and working out in the gym equipment there. So as much as you know, you've been at the forefront of the works, there's been some really good leveraged uh, uh, deals that have come a consequence of, of that. The other one I think back on someone talked about the uh, Caribbean Drive sports field. It was only a few years ago. Those sports fields were in doubt because contrary to everyone's belief, they actually weren't owned by the council. Everyone thought they were owned by North Shore Council. They weren't. They are owned by the Ministry of Education. That land was zoned for housing and there was an intention to, to build a school there. In the council it was Wayne and I that, uh, and, and with some of our colleagues, who managed to cut the deal whereby the land was purchased out of the sale of property from South Auckland, I, I might add. It would be a lot harder doing that now, but back in those days it was property sold. That was offset to purchase the, the land uh, from Caribbean and, and actually bring it into council ownership, which wasn't the case before. So I certainly hope the local board uh, continue with their plans to upgrade that field. It's a wonderful facility, just like a number of the other facilities are around here. Uh, this 
particular part of the North Shore ha has done quite well over the years out of the council. Someone was mentioning a little earlier about us missing out, the Albany Ward missing out. The Albany Ward is on the, on the verge of about $2 billion worth of investment in infrastructure, whether it's through these northern motorway improvements, through the Penlink Bridge, through the wastewater. We're, we're, we're awash with infrastructure investment that um, we've been waiting, like other parts of Auckland. Is that my time up, is it? So um, I just say that, again, read carefully. There's brochures going out. Please read what's been happening. Your local board's done a good job. And the councillors have been working hard too. But thanks for coming on tonight, tonight and nice to meet you. Any questions, please uh, ask after the meeting. My name's Wayne Walker, I'm a councillor. And I'm very proud to be part of a team with John Watson. And I just can't emphasise enough having two councillors representing you that are pulling together means you've got efficiency, effectiveness and better delivery. John and I have put out a brochure that covers off our CVs, our experience, our track record, what we've done, policies, things that we're interested in doing. If you think about things like the busway, the reason the busway is there is because of councillors like myself that actually made it happen. Things aren't accidental. As a councillor, I let out the council's waste strategy. And one of the things that I'm absolutely committed to is sub-regional recycling. There's a location over there where there's an old landfill that would make an ideal recycling facility. And I mean the type of recycling facility that you'll see if you go to cities like Melbourne overseas, where it's not just a small collection of stuff, if you've got a bed, if you've got all sorts of things, just about everything can be repurposed and reused. We need that sort of facility here. As John has mentioned, there's a colossal amount of infrastructure being spent in this area. And the absolutely critical thing is to have better integration so that we make the most of the roading infrastructure, the busway infrastructure, the cycling infrastructure. We get people to make the most of those things by building the connections. And those connections right now aren't sufficiently there. We need to make the best use of the green spaces we've got. And if you look around here, you'll see that there are too many fields that are poorly drained, so that in the winter they can't be used. Often, they're not particularly well planned out. And one of the things that is happening around many parts of Auckland is communities are actually losing reserves because the council's selling them. And if there's something that's outstanding about John and myself, it is that we go into bat for communities. We'll work with them, we'll help them tactically with campaigns. So on the last weekend, we were at a meeting in Upper Harbour Drive because as councillors, we're leading the initiative to pull up a separated cycleway that is unsafe, it's hazardous, it's not best practice. There was no previous issue in terms of cycling safety. There were no accidents. Now you've got between 20, closer to 30 car accidents, some of them quite serious, cars being written off, cyclists being damaged severely. So we'll go back to first principles, we'll work with the community and we'll actively solve those problems for you. So I commend you to read our information, to check us out, <coughs> We make a great team. Thank you. From the audience. Nicholas, yes. you talked about last time you promoted three initiatives that you're going to pursue, sorry, an initiative you're pursuing for the next three years. You haven't mentioned what you propose to do for the next three years. Yeah. Um, so there's lots, I mean, one of the things I'm very careful about is not over-promising, um, but certainly one of my big priorities in terms of resilient sustainable economies was a, um, community, sorry, a circular economy plan that we actually almost got onto the work program this, this year, but we just didn't quite have the votes. 
Now that would give the, an opportunity to look at opportunities to develop our economy in the Upper Harbour area, in an area that, in a way that's not already being done by Business North Harbour. And that's looking at how we can minimise waste and reuse resources. So that's just one initiative. Um, yeah, I don't want to take up too many times with questions, but that's... Thank you. A question for John and Wayne. Um, what the budget G and the development of the community the uh, recycling centre in Albany, where is that at? Yeah, that's true. As far as recycling is concerned, there's a commitment and a budget on Council's part to roll out recycling hubs across Auckland. So that process has already started. There's a recycling hub happening, for example, in the vicinity of the zoo. There is, as yet, no location identified for this area. That's incorrect. Yeah. That's incorrect. Well, I stand corrected, but there are areas under consideration, but there has not been an area that's been selected. I'm, I'm talking about a sub-regional hub. I'm not talking about something small. And there's significant investment required for something like that. I would suggest that an ideal location is the old landfill, which can't be developed for other purposes. I've visited other landfills overseas where you've got such facilities of quite a scale. That's going to require some funding in order for that to happen. Can, can I just add a little bit more context to that? Because I, because I got quite involved with that plan. Um, basically, the government body, they have a strategy to, as, as we said, to roll out some community recycling centres. Us on our local board, mainly to be honest, it was Nicholas and myself, plus um, some people from the, from the Hibiscus and Bays, mainly Alexis, we got together and we really advocated, we presented to the governing body and said, if you've got a list of strategy, make sure Albany's really on it, really high up, because there's no space in the Hibiscus and Bays for a facility, but we've got the space. So our closest ones we've got are currently Devonport, Waiuku, and Helensville. I mean, the Auckland Council are currently try, trialling out a recycling hard plastics at the moment, but you've got to take them to Devonport, Helensville, Waiuku. That's not exactly the place. So we presented to the governing body. We also had meetings with the Waste Solutions team. Um, Albany is on the top of the list. There is a location that has been selected, and it's not the closed landfill. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say it because it was in a workshop, but that landfill has got gas issues. We've had people investigate it because that's our obvious solution. I can't really just put it there. It looks to us perfect. The people that are in charge of the closed landfill say no way, no how. But there is another location that they're looking at. And um, through the advocacy, we are aiming to be the first cap off the rank with the next lot that come through. So that's what we've done. And we work really closely with the Hyper System Bays Board to say it will benefit all the communities on the, the side of the bridge if you do that. Does this recycling oh, space need to be? How many hectares? I actually don't know that in detail. But what we what we did try to push for was a sort of a hub and spoke model, because there's communities that are growing all the time around here. Like C and D waste, construction and demolition, is over fifty percent of our landfill. So what we really were pushing for was that some of the the, the places that are growing really fast, like Finopai or um, or around the Northgate area. Little, little sort of facilities that basically just collection points of the CMD waste, that then track it off to the bigger facilities. That's what we should be doing because, yeah, we're doing really well or recycling everything, but 50% of landfill is CMD. So by the time we get rid of um, get rid of the people's organics that that's been rolled out, the next thing is construction demolition. So yes, we do need these recycle centres. Sorry, I can't answer how big, but I also truly believe we need the hub and spoke to get them really working really well. Have you seen the home grower zero waste? So yeah. Yeah, so is that the kind of hub size you can talk about? Is no, that, 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 that yeah. 
Okay. And it provides jobs and it, yeah, it's really good. I can probably add a bit more context if you like. Um, so I was, um, seven years ago, I was the project manager for the Resource Recovery Network for Council um, and the on-site and organic collections. Um, so there's, there's three sizes of community recycling facilities. Um, what we used to call drop-off depots, which is like farm prior. So very small site, mostly recyclables. Mm -hmm. um, then you've got your community recycling centres, which are um, quite a bit bigger. And then you've got what's called a resource recovery park, or I think they've rebranded it as something else now. Um, but basically that's not just a community facility, it's a bunch of different community organisations all collaborating on one space, working together, passing materials backwards and forwards, creating employment, creating um, a whole bunch of other benefits to the environment, to people, and to the economy. Um, and that size, you'd be looking at least two hectares. The bigger, the better. But yes. Yeah, question? Just a question. It's about rail transport, and why can't we have a spur from the, um, the railway line that goes, is already there? And then we don't have to have a second half crossing because there's all sorts of um, geological problems about the second half crossing. So if we could have a spur, say from Helensville to the top of the North Shore, and then have, you know, rail going to that spur, then it's a U-turn, I know, but with rail it doesn't really matter. Um, and We've got an awful lot of stuff that goes over the Harbour Bridge that doesn't need to go. Think, you know, I mean, there's no time constraints with rail. So that was kind of my question. Can I talk to the idea of a, not needing a second harbour crossing? A second harbour crossing. I is said, I didn't say we don't need it. I said we. There's a lot of geological implications in having a second harbour crossing. Sure. Accepted, but it is imperative. That bridge is dangerous. It is way beyond its use date, use by date. You've got to move forward with some other kind of solution that will get people across the harbour, be it out west, or be it where that bridge or near that bridge now. I was talking we... about rail only, not the train. No, you can't walk a train over that bridge. That is no, quite I, correct. I was talking... and, sorry, someone over here was just talking about the train. But sorry. I was talking about the spur say from between what, you, there, there's already a main trunk line. Yes. So why not a spur that goes along the top to and, and into, say, Albany to take the waste that from Rosedale. There's heavy waste that goes from Rosedale um, sewerage farm, for instance, by truck. And why couldn't it go by rail? And, and there's all sorts of other things that could come in here and go out of here by rail way cheaper than and we're quicker. Wouldn't argue with that. But what are you going to do with the people? <coughs> the bridge is going to run out. What are you going to do with the people? Well, I'm thinking of Toronto. <coughs> where they had a dedicated line. And the people who were against the dedicated walk and cycleway on that bridge are now advocates for a second cycle and walkway on that same bridge. Don't start me on the <laughs> cycle <laughs> Can I just make a couple of comments about rail? Um, John and I have taken an incredibly strong interest in rail and we would suggest the critical thing in Auckland is to actually complete the heavy rail network, which is the plan that goes back to the 70s, was revisited in the 80s and the 90s. So ideally, heavy rail should go to the airport, ideally from both ways, from Onihanga and Pumanui. And then you've got a, a network that is taking advantage of a huge amount of money, a vast amount of money being spent on the city railway. So we need to maximise that project. The other thing that could and should happen 
as far as the North Shore is concerned, is to make the most of the bus network. We need to electrify the bus fleet. In fact, if you want to check something out, Bayes Bus Company have built a prototype electric bus, reticulated, so it's more like a train. And they're actually exporting that overseas. That's the type of technology that exists now. There's a revolution happening in the battery space that's being driven as we speak by Tesla. It makes sense to make the most of that rather than invest large amounts of money in fixed networks such as light rail that costs huge amounts of money and are not evidence-based on sound business cases. And that's where John and I want to see accountability, transparency, and best value for money, which we are not getting adequately now. Yeah. Following up on that theme of accountability, uh, best value for money, what oversight does the council have today about actions taken by Open Transport? Because you're currently proposing on doing an investment around public safety, which will involve spending more council money. Right? So why was this money spent in the first place? Where was the oversight? Where was the approval? Is this yeah. yeah. Because I live in the area and it is more safe today. The issue before with the drivers who were driving on the cycle lanes daily. So, so, you, so you're saying it's safer now than it was prior to the barriers getting put in? Yes. Okay, so that's not... You were, at, were you at that meeting on Sunday in Green Park? I know what the view is of other people. Yeah. But you're saying you want to reverse an action performed by the council that money has been spent on and then do something else, right? So why did it even happen in the first place? Okay. So, so okay. So th that's a good question, and it's one that probably will reappear right across Auckland in terms of the accountability of Auckland Transport. Auckland Transport was set up by legislation in Parliament, so it has a degree of independence that's not uh, repeated with the other CCOs. Uh, and in terms of that particular project, um, I think the local board and, and us. Uh, had a, a cursory announcement that the project was going ahead, but there was no de there was no uh, actual detail. There was certainly no consultation at all with the public, and we would suggest that the, the model that has been chosen there, which is these concrete separators that are used in the city, where the where the speed limit is about 30 k's, and where the type of traffic movement is quite different, is totally inappropriate. For a semi-rural road that at that stage was 70 k's an hour, they brought it down to 60 k's an hour. And as the crashes have have occurred, and it's up to 25, 26 crashes now, without it being completed, so it's half completed. I shudder to think what it would be like if the rest of that left-hand side going towards Hobsonville is done. So what the evidence is there now as far as safety goes and, the, and the, the concerns with safety go to everyone from the residents who live on Upper Harbour Drive, the motorists and also cyclists. So there's quite a significant part of the cycling fraternity uh, who, will not use, who will not use that road now because they see it as being unsafe. So in terms of your accountability, you're absolutely right. There, there has been no real effective oversight or accountability and that is often the case anyway. Auckland Transport comes to the council for their budget, but in terms of projects and project approvals, they have their own board who, who do that. As far as Upper Harbour went, uh, Wayne, myself, and a resident from um, Greenhide, who has a, a experience in infrastructure, went and talked directly to the board in respect of what's been going on at Upper Harbour and, 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 and made the plea that there be an urgent response before someone is killed because it's just a matter of time until there's been bad accidents already it's just a matter of time until there's something really bad there's been near misses already so by any measure whether you're a, a motorist a cyclist or a resident the crash statistics show that something's gone far away up there and, and it needs to be dealt with and their 
tinkering around with uh, interventions in some respects is making it worse. But a, but a good question about accountability. So you've heard the expression haste makes waste, of course, and that's precisely what's happened here. There has been a real pressure put back on Auckland Transport to put in more safer cycleways because in recent years they haven't been doing enough to protect cyclists safe, safe, cyclist safety. Um, and rather than actually do something that would be um, particularly meaningful, and in my mind particularly meaningful would have been Oakleha Valley Road, where we've had petitions from Bike Albany to improve cycling safety there because there have been accidents there. Deaths. Deaths. Yeah. And instead of putting it somewhere significant, they were looking for a quick and easy one. And that's why Upper Harbour Drive got selected. And that's the wrong rationale. Now, yes, I know that there are mixed views in the community. There, there are cyclists out there who are feeling a lot more safe on Upper Harbour Drive because those barriers are gone in. But the reality is that there have been far more car accidents up there because of the design of those separated cycleways. So it is a situation of haste and waste and I hope that Auckland Transport has learned from this and certainly the local board uh, has been on to Auckland Transport and got them to elevate their level of consultation on these projects to ensure that we can be, have a greater say in, in making sure these things are safer and making sure they focus on the right outcomes in the right places when they're delivering them. Sorry. Um, obviously the situation here is that Auckland Transport are just going nuts. They've got zero accountability uh, from ratepayers and boards and the councillors um, as to what they do. I see it every day um, from the Hibiscus and Bays local board. We've had projects pop up that we had no idea about. Um, so one thing that I reckon council should really do is have the two councillors assigned back onto the ATD board because they were chopped off this term. Um, and they need to be in there and they need to be listening to these discussions and actually hearing it from the councillors and their communities as to what's going on because at the moment they're just running a mark, right? So if anything, we need to get the councillors back onto their AT board. They need to actually suss out what they're doing. And then if anything, um, a board, well, our local boards and our councillors need to have far more of a say as to what they're doing because these little Tim Tam slams is what I call them up at Upper Harbour Drive are causing so many accidents and if anything, it just causes grief for the local board members having to deal with it because you guys are the first point of contact for our community and I can't tell you, I mean, I'm just running for Albany Ward and I'm getting contacted daily um, about these separators. So um, in my area in Long Bay, um, they're proposing the same separators up to Onero Way, which is the new Long Bay subdivision and you can hardly fit a car there. So if anything, these separators going in any other place in Auckland is going to be tragic. So um, if anything, accountability and getting the councillors back onto the AT board and actually cleaning them out. And there needs to be greater advocacy, I think, from, uh, I think that the <coughs> local board do a good job now, but they can do better. And I think some of these new people um, will be able to help with that. For example, for myself, I work for central government, for Venusia Walters, uh, and I understand the differences between what we can and can't do um, with Auckland Transport. And so it means that we have to develop our relationships really well with the stakeholders, not just transport, but with police, obviously with all the ram raids that have been happening. We need to make sure that we have those relationships and that we use them and we leverage them. So that's what I'm advocating for. Thanks. Devil's advocate. I have to do devil's advocate. Okay. In any debate, you have to have the devil's advocate. So, I don't know about you, but I drive to Browns Bay sometimes seven times a week. They have some of the best shops. You know, they really do have some great shopping. And I can shoot over there and I shop a lot in Albany because I live right in the heart of Albany. However, I don't know about you, but have you ever had, I get it all the time and I'm not the only one, I get over sometimes 78 emails a day, especially when the elections are on, about cycles and cycles. I'm highly unpopular, so here goes. I think the cyclists should get a license because do you know how many times they drive 
three or four in a row and they don't move over for the cars. Now I hate to tell you this, but the cars are bigger. Okay? And when you're turning dangerous corners in Browns Bay, it happens every time towards the main street. The cyclists don't move over. So if you want more money, we'll just charge everybody okay, to ride a cycle and prove that you're competent. And then, yeah, it is our responsibility to give them a decent amount. But it's also the cyclist's responsibility. Do not ride two or three abreast when cars are trying to go around a single corner because they break that rule all the time and you need to check who's really causing the accidents. I think that's a different type of cycle we're yeah. talking about there. We cycle when we can. We also live up the road, which I was actually going to ask you guys, um, what are you doing about the intersection of the avenue and Albany Highway? Because we've lived for 28 years up that road, we're still waiting for traffic lights or something. And we take our lives in our hands every time we pull out of that intersection and it's been put off and been put off and been put off. So what's happening, yeah. please? Yeah, good question. Okay, so... Um, I mentioned before, in terms of the area as a whole, there's a massive investment in infrastructure across the Albany Ward amounting to several billion. The one outlier, and has been an outlier for the last two decades, is, is the avenue. So about five or six years ago, uh, that project, in, in line with a number of others in that area with, the, with Hills Road, was all set to go. It was just to the point of uh, going up to the community for final design, and it and it got pulled, it just disappeared, those projects disappeared. Then, uh, in the last term, uh, there was a, the, the Auckland Transport came up with a much lower cost option, which was going to get 75% um, subsidy for NZTA, uh, it was going to be about 12 million to put in lights, and, um, and it was going to be part of this over-programming budget, where, um, where a project like that, which is quite a simple straightforward project in the scheme of things could be slipped in while these other big projects were in abeyance. Um, that then, uh, it, it's still on the books as far as that over-programming budget goes but there, there's, no, there's no timeline, there's, there's nothing specific that's, that's actually um, in, in motion. So in terms of that avenue, it is a blight. Um, uh, it didn't happen with North Shore. It hasn't happened with with us thus far uh, in terms of the super city, so that's going 12 years now. So, so um, it, it's something that really no excuses can be made for. It is a justifiable case. You only have to drive by and look at the queues uh, which go right up around the corner. So I, I'm sorry to say, and I apologise to all the people that are in Parimarimo and up that road, that we once again were in this position where uh, it's on the books, so it hasn't been cut. It's part of this 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 budget, and, and in the scheme of things, the money involved is not significant. So the, the last time when they came, there was a huge response from the community in terms of the last submission process. Mm -hmm. The local board were active in that. Wayne and I were active in that, and we thought, Hallelujah! Finally, it, it, it's going to happen after all these years. But it, but it hasn't. Uh, all I can say is that uh, it, it, it's not in the category of a number of these other projects that have just been cut, so it, 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 it's still there on the books, but indefinite. So, no, it, there's, there's not many excuses. So what can you do about it? Because this is the story. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, if I can just finish off, yeah. if I can just finish off, and it goes to this gentleman's question about Auckland Transport. So. You can come to the local board and Margaret Miles and Lisa White, you can come to us and, and we will advocate and we'll do our best. Ultimately, it is the Auckland Transport Board that make the decision. So I cannot put my hand on my heart and say to you, next term I will get that delivered. Because I can't, neither can anyone here. That's not the way the game runs. In terms of Auckland Transport, they have a lot of faults, but there also is a degree of objectivity across Auckland as a whole in terms of not being open to political influence. So the last thing we want is actually political influence there where people start getting projects on the gravy train in their own. That doesn't happen. All these projects are put up, they're analysed. But in terms of the avenue, it hasn't been a good outcome. But ultimately, it is Auckland Transport who decide all that. And all we can do is keep putting it to them. That happened in the last term, uh, and it will happen again. But ultimately, they're the ones who make the call. Right, um, yeah, my turn now. Yeah. I agree, okay, Auckland Transport, with some things, not everything is clearly you're here. Um, Auckland Transport 
does have a lack of accountability towards the local boards, and it's the, the super city set up. They are very separate. Um, a bit of bit more history on the avenue. The, there's something called an RLTP, which is a, um, a long-term transport plan from A2. In the previous one, it was ring-fenced that the avenue would be fixed. Of course it wasn't. In 2018, so that's this term, the Auckland Transport put out the RLTP. These two councillors voted, there was unanimous support for the RLTP. The RLTP that went out with no mention of the avenue, no mention of anything in Albany, and our two councillors voted, it went through unanimously. Only once it went out to the public did we as a board see that, oh my goodness, this plan which was ring fenced last year is now dropped. We organised a protest. You know those signs? Submit now, fix this bridge. I painted them. You waved, we waved the thing. You waved the thing. I was lucky at that time, I had the cutest little four month old puppy in the world. So I spent a Sunday down at the Coatesville Markets. Anyone that had the dog got a sign of form, I got 87 forms. Between the work of the board and me at the market, we got, I think it was about 300 forms um, submissions to Auckland Transport. Then we How are they going to avoid those existing constraints? Are they going to make us fly or something? So it's absolutely ridiculous. But in terms of, in terms, we can't promise anything because AT is quite separate, but I've just really got to jump in and say that our councillors we put it forward unanimously with no changes. That our team here that didn't have it. We didn't have a choice. Quite It was unanimous. You said unanimous. You had a choice. Well, Auckland Transport presents us with the budget, thoroughly costed, objectively analysed, mm -hmm. and, the there's, and there's a funding cap. Unless we enlarge the budget overall, we've got a problem. The council does have to live within its means. But we've got it in John, our funded. You could please, have done that. Let me finish. Okay. John and I would both suggest that there are huge improvements that can be made in efficiency on the part of local transport. And we can have a long discussion about that. I would suggest that money can be found. But under the present circumstances, we don't have sufficient accountability or oversight around that. And that needs to happen. Does it have to be unanimous in order to be passed? No. So there it stands. You didn't have to vote yes for it. Uh, okay. So do you know how many projects were changed or added to that budget from all the councillors? This doesn't matter. No, no, no. It does matter because it's zero. Because that is not the way the game plays here. They come in with their budget and their projects, and and that's it. They have the allocation through the budget that goes to their projects. But they they are a largely autonomous body. Okay. So their board decides that. Our ability to influence or add things, that just doesn't happen at all with, without any project. You do not put a project up at the meeting. That's not the way it goes. As far as that um, advocacy goes, we were working directly with the Perimarima Ratepayers Association too at the same time as you were out with your placards, which, which was great. The local board did a great job. But we were involved too. That, that's, that, the situation in the avenue is a blight on, on, on the council that hasn't been fixed. But there are any number of other areas across Auckland that are just, just the same. So, so all we can say is that, well, the, the sums that are involved this time round are not big. So it's 12 million for the project, 75% subsidy, the 3 million. It's not a lot of money in the scheme of things. But, but again, it's all- So that, that's not the point. The well, point it, is the, was, it is the point because- No, no, excuse me, I'm gonna make the point. The point is there is a reason to object to it and no one on the council objected to it. It went through unanimously. Yeah. Right? Um, so you can't stand here and say that you were for that action if you let that through unanimously. Well, we could have, we could have uh, opposed it in any number of other projects too. You and, know, we're trying to tell you how the council works in terms of that budget and projects. Right? They, they are separate. They make the call. They make the decision. We advocate as hard as we can beforehand. And we have been doing that with that project for a number of years. So I, I, I understand all of that. Doesn't mean you have to have, you have to vote yes. Okay. 
Okay, so we vote no against all the other projects in the Albany Ward that are in that budget, we do it. But on the grounds, budget. can you vote no on specific grounds? On the, on the $2 billion worth of project, we vote against those. You can vote no and you can have a point of order, which would be to say that they were voting no because it's not a project of interest. It's not a point of order. It's not a point of order. So is there any way to fight Auckland Health, um, so Auckland Transport, or do they just do what they like? Because that's the message I'm getting, is no one can stand up to Auckland You've Transport. You've got a structural yeah. problem, and it goes back to what the government did to us in 2010 when they brought Auckland Council in. They created all of these CCOs with no actual control mechanism. And so you have, you have Auckland Transport, which is essentially evil. It has, no, <laughs> it has no interest in listening to you little people out here. It has no interest in listening to these guys. Honestly, these, I've seen these local boards interacting with their Auckland Transport reps. They're disgusting. Not the local board, the AT people they see for the I want to use the F word. They are infuriating. They are a horrible, terrible, disgusting, evil organisation. And I don't blame them for having a problem with dealing with how that works. I think the councillors are between a rock and a hard place because these people have got them by the short and curlies. Mm -hmm. they, they, they have total control over themselves. The reason two councillors came off the board of Auckland Transport, I was told by one of those councillors, was they couldn't come back with the information because their fiduciary responsibility of being a board member meant they no. couldn't be a council member. That's not well, that's what, Chris, that's what Christine told me. They, so, came off, they came off because Goff wanted them off. That's why. Right. You're right yeah. You're right about that, John. There's no accountability problem. Yes, you're yeah. right, but Goff removed them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he's gone now, too, so that's good. We've got a new mayor after this. So, it, fundamentally, the only way to really fix this is to go, this sucks, and we will vote for a government not a local government, but a central government that will come in and give us an Auckland that we want, not an Auckland that John Key and Rodney Hyde decided we should mm. have. And therein lies the problem. Mm. Look, I, I don't disagree, there's some massive structural problems here. And unfortunately, if you vote for either of the two major parties, that's not going to fix these structural problems. But I'm not going to take the doom and gloom perspective that my colleague here has. Because <laughs> We're not colleagues yet, mate, but thank you. <laughs> but, <laughs> I want to be. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, look, we're, we're never going to have a whole all the power that Auckland Transport has. But we can't equally give up the fight. And we didn't give up the fight on the avenue. We haven't given up the fight on the avenue. Um, we, we got um, sidelocked on up Arbor Drive, we got hit from the side on that one, and it was painful. But we didn't give up on that either. And we have some fantastic people who work for Auckland Transport, who are in that organisation advocating for what our community wants. So I certainly wouldn't demonise everybody who works here. They're not winning all the time either. <laughs> but, you know, this is politics, and there are some structural problems but we keep on fighting. I want to say that there's a lack of consultation with community groups and with local boards happening from Auckland Transport. They are bringing out projects that are coming out, popping out of the blue, as Victoria said, and local boards that haven't even heard of them. Same thing happened with the cycleways on, um, in Green High. If Auckland Transport was to have a period of consultation with the community, with the local boards, they actually could have avoided um, some of these missteps um, you know, it's the same thing with Whangapura Road, they were proposing to put a raised pedestrian crossing there, no consultation with the local board, um, and so there was a big backlash from the community, and so they've now gone back and delayed it. Um, but even with our election, for example, Auckland Transport removed um, basically the only site for election signs in Albany without consulting with the Upper Harbour local board. So there's a, I guess, there's a culture change where they need to be more accountable to the community, to the community representatives. Um, and I think it's important that local board members and councillors advocate for that, for more consultation with community groups. A little bit awkward transport, but I'd like to see a show of hands from you all 
as to who would support and advocate for free public transport in Auckland. Thank you. That's all I want to know. Can I say why I haven't put my hands up? Because we have many communities in Upper Harbour with no public transport. There's no public transport in Scott Point. There's no public transport in Perimeter Road. There's no travel transport in Albany Heights. And there's no travel public transport in Half of Green Heights. So I, given that funds are limited, and I know they are limited, I would rather us get some public transport in these areas. And yeah, I, I do like the idea, I can't remember which councillor has, which mayoral candidate has proposed it, of free for the over 65s, free for community service card holders, and free for young people. But we've got such a limited amount of budget, and we've got communities that are growing really rapidly. You should see the thousands of houses in Albany Heights with none, mm. same as Scott Point. It's terrible. Counterpoint to that, though, is if you gave all the people that do have public transport access that free, then the people who don't would have freer roads to travel on because they have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, not necessarily. Because if, if the government were to introduce something like a carbon tax, for example... Um, yeah, but we've got electric cars. That, that, uh, not everyone has electric cars. We're beginning to have. Well, yeah, that, that's yes, one last thing. Nice that, that there are actually studies that prove that the, the most people would go to public transport if it was fast, efficient, and reliable. It's not the price that's the limiting factor. Yes. So we need to deal with those issues. Can, can I just um, add something that this lady here said about the second harbour crossing? Um, I I accept. Well, I'm sorry if I've gone to diverge. So it doesn't diverge completely, but. Um, the second harbour crossing issue, yes, there are enormous geological um, implications behind constructing a second harbour crossing because Auckland is based on an extinct volcano field. Um, I have a bit of a problem with the current um, uh, Hart Bridge insofar as that I think it was last year uh, there, there was a truck that jammed itself in the middle of the Hart Bridge and disrupted the traffic. Yeah going over the bridge from either end, so everyone had to go out the long way. Uh, and um, that's something that I think that um, needs to be, uh, prevent something like that happening again, because I was very concerned about that, because that didn't have a disruptive effect. So that's related right. to the problems. I am now going to give each candidate a minute and a half to do a closing statement. <laughs> 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 Transport is evil. <laughs> I coined the phrase communities first for my sole stand as an independent for council. Why? Because that's what I believe and that's where I think Auckland Transport fails most abysmally. It doesn't consult with us. Council itself fails to listen to communities directly. The local boards do as good a job as they can with the very limited amount of control and funding that they have. What I stand for more than anything else is to find ways to make council and local boards more responsive to the communities, having those communities more involved than they already are, taking, going and proactively pulling in the organisations that are not already funded and assisted and help them find ways to be assisted. <coughs> It's something I work in through a thing called the Wellbeing Network in our area, and it's something I firmly believe can be rolled out anywhere it doesn't already exist. Communities are first. Vote John Davies. Thank you. I don't really know what to say, but um, <clears throat> I'm ready to work. I'm ready to work collaboratively with other elected members, our local boards, our councillors, our mayor and I will work hard. Um, I do have a track record already of being able to work with other people around the table, and I know for sure that I will listen and take your feedback seriously. Um, if you want any other information about who I am, what I stand for, and what I will bring, visit victoriashort.co.nz, <laughs> and um, there you'll see you think about me. So, thank you. Vote short. <laughs> Well, kia ora again. Uh, look, I hope tonight that I've made it clear that Upper Harbour is my backyard, and that's our uh, campaign slogan, because for me, my backyard is the bit of the house that I spend the most time cleaning up, 
and working it. And it's the, it's the bit that I really care about. And I hope you've seen that we as a local board have been trying to do as much as we can to make Upper Harbour a really livable space for the people who live here. Uh, and living Upper Harbour, we believe in healthy, active communities, uh, growing green spaces, greater transport choices, and a resilient, sustainable economy. And that's the sort of commit things we're going to stay committed to in the next term. We're using every opportunity we can to achieve those things and the various decisions we can. One last thing, uh, Usra Kasuri Balu sends her apologies. She's messaged me tonight just to say she yeah, unfortunately got stuck with another engagement tonight, but she would have loved to have been here. So please, uh, finishing off, please give all, uh, please give four ticks to your four living up a harbour campus. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think part of one of the key roles as being a representative for community is based on relationships. And I think it's really important that local boards and councillors have the strongest relationships with um, the community and the aims to facilitate consultation with the community and understand what is needed and wanted um, rather than um, making decisions based on assumption. I think it's really important that we have councillors who have positive relationships around the table with other councillors. I think there's um, more balance needed which will mean more investment um, and more for the Albany Ward in the future. Um, I've also, I have to say, I've become a little bit of a local uh, representation fanatic and I've attended many Hibiscus and Bay's local board meetings as well as Upper Harbour local board meetings with the aim to understand more about this uh, role and what can be achieved and I do have to say I would like to give my really warm endorsement of the Living Up of Harbour team who are here tonight, um, Kyle Parker and Atkinson, Nicholas Main, who I actually think are um, the best of the best when it comes to community representatives um, so I'm honoured that I can sit here um, alongside them tonight and um, also have had advice from them as well. And yeah, I, I look forward to the continuing election and we've had a great turnout from candidates here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there have been some really good discussions. And I, and I think, you know, for Albany Ward, it's time for change. Look, we've had the same councillors since the creation of the super city. We didn't get anything done in the avenue. So correlation. <laughs> um, if you're interested in finding out more about me, go to jakeflaw.co.nz. Um, please vote Jake Flaw and Sylvia Young for Albany Ward. Thank you. Um, well, I'd like to thank you all for this um, allowing me to participate in this. It's been very stimulating debates about issues that are facing Auckland in the future. And I, um, I, I also accept that there needs to be greater consultation between the community and the council. And, um, I hope that I can have your support uh, to be a, a member of the Upper Harbour Local Board because I believe in Auckland and I believe in the future. Thank you. My name is Christine Glover and I care. I care about you and I care about our environment. I care about our assets. We haven't talked a little bit about it, but let's say that there are a lot of assets here like this Meadowood um, house and all around uh, up harbour and I want to make sure that they are maintained. I also care about our budget and making sure that we are accountable and are not overspending on wrong areas. So I've done a lot of work as an event manager on how to maintain budgets, large budgets, million dollar budgets, whatever. And um, it's very important that we are accountable and that we're facilitating that right and divvying that money up to the right people as well. I also am a event producer who I've got a more ready seat here. Um, so I've done lots and lots of community events. Some of my money when I was at Albany House got cut and I was working with priority people, um, use at risk. That was really tough, but we built the Northern Corridor and that's an amazing thing too. So it's about that balance. And so I know those two perspectives. I've also worked for the central government as a member support um, I've worked on constitutional issues all around Upper Harbour. Um, I understand the rental market here. I also understand what it's like to be in Parry and um, that beautiful park that we have. Um, I know Upper Harbour, I love it, and I'd like to do the next best thing for me, which is to um, be on the local board. So thank you very much for your time. Safer, connected communities. Christine. Here from this time now, okay? Hey guys, this is, is Amar Zawedi, my best guy. I'm an honest guy, I'm a straight up guy, I'm approachable guy. You'll find me on Facebook, you'll find me on my camp, my brochure where you go on, camp, I'll leave it. 
I've also got a haircut for you guys. Here you go. But hey, the important thing is to vote. And uh, a good place to start and leave this would be thank you. Thank you for organizing this. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to come out and introduce yourselves. Also, thank you to the people who've been on the board. It's a lot of work here. I'd like to end and to my summation, my, my in sum, I'd like to say is, look, I actually feel for you guys here. You're the people voting for us. We're here asking for your vote. And we can't give you answers. We, we hear such intelligent people, such great thoughts coming out of people who have experienced, who've been before here. They're talking about structural issues, they're talking about, but there's something that's not working. My aim is to get there and make that work. How do you work? Because we're coming out in a group of people and I'm saying, sorry, but we can't, it's not working. 28 years, you said, the average is still a problem. I mean, come on, get, I'm not scared to make things, to shake things up here, but you've got to find solutions. That's what the board is for, what the council is for. And that's what I'm willing to go ahead. Go the distance, give real answers, real issues, real people. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to help people. I'm keen to serve. That's why I love your vote. Namaste. You're right. 400, 400 um, communities today in Ukraine got back under the Ukraine government. They got them back 3,000 square miles. 400 communities, and I thought, wow, but we just counted this community. 400 communities, I'm pretty sure that would cover all of Auckland. And they got most of that city back. And they celebrate. So I celebrate that 400 communities are back in, under Zelensky and the government. And we are spoiled. It's not until I travelled overseas to one of the countries I suddenly realised just how wonderfully rich we are in this country. Even if you're the poorest person in Auckland, you really are rich. You know, you really are. And they don't have a transport system right now in Ukraine. They have nothing. They don't even have food and they don't even have water. So every day, because I'm learning how to pray properly, I'm grateful that we have a transport system, evil or otherwise. <laughs> and, and I'm really grateful that we have our system and we have food. I can go to the supermarket. Well, it doesn't matter. Sometimes I have hundreds of dollars. And many times I've had $10,000 a week. Depends what businesses I'm running. And I can buy anything I want. Even now we've got caps, but they don't have food. So we are grateful. I'm lucky to live in New Zealand. I'm grateful to be here. And I just think we're lucky to have a good government system. I support and I can do all levels. Thank you. Hi, Sheree Carbines. My website, sheriecarbines.net. Nice and easy. Me at sheriecarbines.net if you want to get in touch with me. I've had the privilege of getting to meet and talk to these people quite a bit over the last couple of weeks. It's the first time I've actually gone uh, into this sort of political forum. And I have to say, there's some really good people. We've all got the same ideal. We all want to do what we can for you. And what we've got is we've got different skills. We've got management, we've got business, we've got organisation. All of these things, and we all know how to work in committees and in committees. So again, I don't envy you, your job, but I say that with three people stepping down already from this uh, ward, it's time for a change. It's time for fresh blood and people who can work together, who know what they're doing, not to say that don't, because I want you to be for sure. <laughs> That's certain. But definitely, we've got strength here, and we've got will, but we've got a lot of work to do with getting our community recovering from this pandemic, which we kind of try not to talk about anymore. But there's a lot to do. We've got business need to be supported so they can get on their feet, so they can employ people so that our young children, our teenagers, who have done so badly in the last couple of years at school, have got options. That's me. Hi, thank you, Anna. Sorry, thank you, Shay, for endorsing me. Um, <laughs> anyway, what, why should you vote for me? Well, I'm experienced, I'm passionate, I love our community. Our behalf is great, but it is growing very fast, and there are areas that are really badly served. Like we talked about lack of public transport in Parry. In Whanuapai, they've got pretty much one playground for a massive number of houses that are growing. Every time I go there, there's another couple hundred houses up. And we've got to be really smart with how we apply our money. I'm a chartered accountant. I look at things and we, we as a team kind of go, hmm, I look at things, it's not right what's going on. One, one great example, we found out that in Whanuapai, there's some land the council already owned that the community wasn't having access to. So now, 
I've said, hey, can't the community have access to that? So Nick and I have worked really hard on it. And the CF are now looking at whether the community can, we're going to mow it, community get access to it. So that's the kind of healthy app communities that our team stand for. That's why Nick, me, Carl, and Sylvia, we want healthy app communities, businesses that are strong and green with the circular economy project. Better public transport, better cycling access, all those kind of greater transport choices and more green spaces. We are really being underserved in terms of green spaces. The, the council open space acquisition policy doesn't even include conservation space as green space. There's some big changes that need to be done. Thank you very much. Yes, good evening. Uh, it's been very interesting listening to all the comments of those that have expressed their views tonight and I can see that we have a, quite a diverse group of opinions here this evening. It's good to have a diverse set of opinions. I have, can give you a little bit of history if it's helpful. There has been a number of designs that we put, that I've seen put forward for the avenue. It not only includes the intersection, but it actually includes the, the bridge there. The bridge is grossly inadequate, and if you create more lanes coming down the avenue, you've got to not funnel them at the the bottom end at the, the bridge. You've got to really create another bridge at that point. In terms of making free travel on public transport, that might be one rather wonderful, but not too practical, because it will all come back to funding at the end of the day, and it will come out of your, yours and my rates, because the city can't tolerate that sort of expenditure. So you and I would be rated more. It would be smarter to actually apply a costing factor across the whole whole Auckland region so that we all support transport. We see the benefits of it. Um, in terms of the other issues that I've heard tonight, it's it's good having Wayne and John here because you can't you can't go forward unless you've got the benefit of hindsight. And so there's always a little bit of reservation when a new person comes in because they don't have the benefit. But I was impressed by John and Wayne this evening. I think they are very good candidates. I have no connection to those two, but I have listened to their sound argument tonight, and I can see there's fire and belly in their, uh, in their tummies, and they will carry this particular upper half of water forward. So I won't say anything more, but John McLean from Upper Harbour Board, we do live in a really choice area, and it's all over to us to retain what we have. Thank you. Uh, good evening again. Uh, thank you very much, Metalwood House, and for organising and hosting us tonight. It's, it's a, a rare opportunity because we we haven't had many opportunities to meet uh, as candidates and, and, and with all of you. Uh, thank you very much for spending some of your time with us. I know we know your time is very important for those of you in the room, but we're hoping that you take some of the messages that you heard from us. Uh, today and to thank you to all the candidates that are in the room it's not really easy to put yourself up uh, to put your hand up to stand up at six o'clock in the morning to wave your signs in the Nordock and have the door slam in front of your faces so keep up the good work while we're endorsing candidates if I have the opportunity to sit on the local board I, I would you know ask you to consider to adding your votes to Christine uh, Glover uh, Amar Trabidi and um, John McLean and uh, who's right? And because I'm a collaborative guy, Carl Parker's a really cool guy too. So you know, wouldn't mind having him around the table. Uh, you got some great choices as far as council is concerned. We have our incumbents and and uh, Victoria Short, who, who's, who's here as well, and they're, they're all great people. So there's quite a lot to consider as we move forward. Uh, I'm a collaborator. I, I, you know, I'm a networker, and more importantly, I'm passionate about delivering for our communities and keeping us connected. So my name is John Lowell. I hope to. Um, uh, you know, hopefully get your support, and thank you again for tonight. Kia ora katoa again. Namiti mihi nui kia koe for tonight. It's very important um, that we have local facilities to run these kind of events. Um, really appreciate the invitation. Um, and and to all my, my fellow candidates, um, good luck guys. Um, I know no matter who wins, um, in the upcoming elections, um, hopefully the Yabby yeah, Ward and the Upper Harbour Local Board will be well served. Um, so, Kyle Parker from Living Upper Harbour, livingupperharbour.org.nz is our website. Um, as a reminder, we um, support healthy, active communities, growing green spaces, um, sustainable, resilient economy, and um, better public transport options, active and, and public transport. Um, 
So basically I just wanted to add a little bit to what I had earlier. Um, I have worked in local government as an officer for five years. I understand how hard it is for those officers to get stuff over the line. Um, I understand how to help them to do it. I have worked in the community sector for the last seven years. I understand the pain the community feels um, around environmental work, around social work, and I definitely bring a different skill set to a bunch of very esteemed colleagues here. So, good luck everyone. Thank you all. Thank you, Keanu. Um, currently there's a review of local government taking place right across uh, New Zealand which is looking at the future of local government. There hasn't been a review of the super city as such. There was a review of the CCOs but not the structure that was put up. A lot of the issues that are confronting communities right across Auckland are to do with that fundamental structure that was imposed upon us. In my view it's been exacerbated in the last two terms by a party political bloc that essentially controls the council with a few collaborators uh, who really have lost Auckland their independence. So if you look at Three Waters, um, if, you, if you look at the planning impositions now, we've fundamentally taken away Auckland's planning uh, delegation. Um, there's a real issue to do with a lack of strong independent voice for, for Auckland. One of my fervent hopes is that during this term of council, this next term of council and through the elections, there will be a change and a change for the better. There can be, there is a lot of strong, good, independent people around for local boards. And I think of John McLean, who's also served on the Upper Harbour local board in previous terms, both at the local board level and at the council level. There's a chance to bring together a newer Auckland, one different from the, the kind of entrenched party political run that we've had that hasn't been good for Auckland, irrespective of your, 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 you know, your, your, your political colours. I think in terms of Upper Harbour, there's been a lot of good gains for the community through the super city, but I think in this next period going forward in particular, there's going to be a real need for some strong people who really get in and back their communities. Thank you. Follow on from that, when you're electing a councillor, you're effectively electing someone that's making decisions across the entire region. That's from Bukitkali up to Kiara. It's colossal. And obviously there's oversight over a whole range of council controlled organisations that are not adequately accountable. And we need better measurement, better monitoring, better management, so that we get better value out of those council controlled organisations, because in my opinion, that is presently not the case. We need to make much, much better use of what we've got across everything. And certainly as far as projects are concerned, and I'm talking about the avenue, what John and I do, and it's quite ex exceptional in many instances, we go into bat for communities, we do our homework, we analyse those projects, we try and lift them according to weightings, whatever they are, so that they get over the line. It's not simple, it's not easy, it requires a lot of hard work. And if you talk about some of the bigger issues that John was mentioning, We've actually organised meetings in Auckland. So I helped initiate a meeting at St Matthews in the city on the housing intensification issue, which is tragic for Auckland. So we will not only organise meetings in our ward, but we'll go the extra distance over small projects and big projects. And there are very, very few councillors in Auckland that are actually up for that. And that's our track record, both within the ward and also across Auckland over some time. And there would be very, very few people with the depth of expertise, knowledge and competency that we have, all the more so as a team. Thank you. Thank you for all your